On today's episode, we talk about painting and all the tools that you need to do the job right. Promotional consideration for Amazing Plastic the Scale Model Show is brought to you by Tenet Controls, makers of scale model lighting systems. Tenet Controls brings models to life. Visit them today at tenetcontrols.com. And by Paleo Acrylic Paints, with a wide range of highly pigmented colors specially formulated for models and miniatures. Paleo Acrylic Paints sold at hobby stores worldwide. Hey, welcome to Amazing Plastic, the Scale Model Show. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host as we go through the art of scale model building, and that's what we cover each and every episode here on Amazing Plastic. Uh, What we're going to do today is we're going to be talking about the right tools for the job, and specifically, we're diving into a multi-part series on painting. We're going to be talking about the tools that are involved in getting those those uh, fantastic paint jobs that you're all looking for. We're also going to be doing a review or taking a look at what's inside, not necessarily a review, but uh, we're going to take a look at what's inside the Iwata Deluxe Airbrush Set. And uh, this was sent to us by the good folks at Iwata, and we want to thank them for that. This is chock full of stuff. It's not that expensive. If you're looking to get into the scale model building hobby or any other type of hobby where you'd be using an airbrush, this is a great starter kit for that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on in the show. Uh, First, I want to do a couple of shout outs. Uh, I want to give you some other places that you can go on the Internet other than Amazing Plastic, the scale model show, for other information related to scale model building. And some of the best ones that I've found uh, out on the net that don't repeat themselves or keep doing the same thing over and over again. As modelers, we want to learn and we want to grow. And we can't do that if we're watching the same people build the same stuff all the time. Um, We don't learn things like weathering techniques, which is what we're going to try and teach you later on in the series about painting. Um, And you see me do a little bit of weathering early on uh, in earlier episodes of Amazing Plastic, but we're going to show you a little bit more in-depth. We're going to try and get into some pre-shading. We're going to try and get into uh, flesh tones. We're going to show you how to paint figures. Uh, We're going to show you how to do some finish work, all using acrylic paint. Um, The reason that we use acrylic paint here in the studio is because we don't have an elaborate setup where we have a booth that can vent out our fumes to the outside. So I like to use acrylic paint because they're low in order, odor, pardon me, and they are not harmful to your health in a lot of cases. Depending on the acrylic paint you get, sometimes it can be. I'm going to show you the chemicals that we use to clean our brushes and uh, how we go about doing that. We're going to show you all that kind of stuff. Um... Well, again, we're also. I also want to tell you about these places to go on YouTube. Uh, I want to talk. Uh, let me just grab my iPad real quick here. International Scale Modeler. This is a group of guys out of the UK that primarily do military models. They don't do the same model all the time, but they do military models from planes to all the way down to uh, vehicle armor. And I got to tell you, these guys have some great reviews. They run contests all the time. So I would suggest that you go over and check them out. Um, just to give them, you know, a little bit of support and show them a little bit of love. Also want to direct you to Dr. Cranky. Dr. Cranky is, uh, if you're not familiar with him, just look him up on YouTube. Dr. Cranky is funny. He's entertaining, and he's got some great information about how to build your cars, how to take your car from that, just that curbside kit, uh, and, uh, go to something completely out there. Uh, If you want to build a zombie vehicle, definitely he's the guy to check out. He's got some great reviews as well from time to time. Um, I also want to point you over to Atomic Dog uh, 32 on YouTube. Got some great stuff over there. A good friend of mine, Brian. 
Um, now, where where else am I going here? Uh, who else do I want to quickly mention? Uh, Malavictus, if you are a fan of armor, uh, Malavictus does, uh, and he's a good member of our community. You might have seen him around, Danny Monahan. He uh, does everything related to armor. He was uh, in the Royal uh, Brigade, I believe. Um, so he was a military man, so he knows a lot about tanks and things like that. Definitely uh, something to check out. Rebel Bubba. Uh, <laughs> He's a Southerner, but you know what? He's got a heart of gold, and he's funny as heck, so I, I recommend that you go check him out as well. My Canadian brother, Jonathan Milbury, he's uh, he's doing a bunch of uh, little builds, so you might want to check his stuff out. And, of course, as always, check out my good friend Jason Garris over at Video Workbench. Video Workbench has in-depth tutorials on painting, how to use your airbrush, uh, and so on and so forth. And we're going to try and cover a bunch of that stuff uh, on the show. If you have any questions or there's something that you would like to see uh, us do here on Amazing Plastic, by all means, send it along. We would like to have your suggestions and show you what you're asking for. Uh, so please, you can write to us at info at amazingplastic.com. Just drop us a line over there. Tell us what you're interested in, and uh, we'll see what we can do about getting uh your your uh, suggestion on the show and answering your questions. So if you have questions, we'd love to answer them for you. Uh, on to the Jimmy build. The Jimmy build is progressing very nicely. A lot of people are diving right in and building their kits and doing a wonderful job uh, about that. If you're not familiar with the Jimmy build, it's something that we started on January 1st of 2014. It runs till the end of March where we'll have all of the finished product pictures in and we'll be putting them together for an auction to raise money for the Jimmy Foundation out of Boston. They are a group of, of individuals that have gotten together to raise awareness and funds to help fight cancer um, in children. So it's it's definitely worthwhile, and uh, it's an international organization. So please, if you're uh, wanting to help us out in some way or another, that is a great way to show your love for the hobby and show your support uh, to raise funds and awareness for um cancer uh, research for children so i definitely want you to check that out you can check out all the details they're posted on uh, amazingplastic.com at our website you can also check them out on our community at on google plus which is amazing plastic um, and be sure to subscribe to this show we uh, we always look for your your subscriptions and uh we are doing really well we're, we're really progressing uh wonderfully i thought that i didn't think that we would get this far and we have uh i, I want to welcome a couple people aboard uh, that are supporting the show now PM Hobbycraft a uh, local hobby store here in Calgary uh, they do ship internationally and you can find them at pmhobbycraft.ca and uh, definitely go check them out if you're interested in ordering a model kit some tools some supplies uh, they will ship all over the world so we want to thank PM Hobbycraft for their support of Amazing Plastic the Scale Model Show uh, what else are we going to be doing we're going to be showing you uh, as we progress through the series I want to get back to that real quickly as we progress through the series on painting we're going to not only be showing you the right tools we're going to be showing you paint mixing next week uh, so we're going to discuss colors the the paint that we use we're going to go more in depth with that we're also going to be uh, discussing um, why we use what we use and then we'll get into mixing paints and showing you how to do that uh what else are we going to do in the part three we're going to start actually painting some stuff and uh, we're going to cover skin uh, on uh, figure models we're going to cover some weathering uh, we're going to cover base coats and uh, of course primers so make sure that you stick around for that but right now let's head over to the bench and take a look at all the tools that go into making up the tools that you need for painting and uh we'll head over to the bench right now so come along with me all right over here at the bench we've got all kinds of brushes laid out from airbrushes to standard brushes and you can see we have a multiple of sizes and a multiple of shapes as well if i pull these back down into frame a little bit you'll be able to see them and we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about what not to use and what to use. Some of the things that we use um, or some of the things that we've seen on other uh, model building videos and things like that, 
we're going to try to avoid, and I'm going to tell you why we're going to, going to avoid them. But let's first start talking about why I have so many brushes and how you can keep your brushes in uh, great care uh, or in great shape for use for a long, long time. These brushes that you see over here, these red and these blue ones, I want to point out that I've had these brushes for more than 15 years, and they are in still in great shape. And the reason I say that they're in great shape is because I've taken care of them. And I still use these all the time when I'm building models. And you see there's a variety of sizes. These are what are typically known as round tip brushes because they all have a little round tip. Let me just uh, switch cameras here and I'll show you what I mean. You can see there that that brush has a very round tip to it. So it's... Uh, it's really good uh, for, for getting into smaller areas, and it's a stiff bristle brush. Um, my, the tips on, on my brushes are all in great shape. Um, as my brushes wear out from time to time, here's, a, here's one of my oldest brushes. I should show you this one. This one is actually really, really cool. Look at that tip. That is amazing. It's in great, great shape. These brushes all come from Citadel, which are Games Workshop brand of brushes. Um, I was using, for the longest time, I would use Winsor Newton brushes. But then I, I switched to these brushes, and because I worked for Games Workshop, as many of you know, uh, for a couple of years, or a year and actually for about a year and a half, uh, and I was painting miniatures like crazy. And these brushes, um, they were readily available to me, and I didn't have to go to the art store and always buy expensive um, detail brushes. Although there are times when you want to have a really nice fine brush, and I'll explain that in a few minutes. Um, but these brushes for most of my miniature building are the brushes I use. And I use them now, still today, uh, with a lot of uh, the painting that I do on other model kits. So... If you're looking for a decent set of brushes that aren't going to break the bank, then you might want to look at the Citadel brushes. I believe they've gone up in price. I can't be sure, but check out your local Games Workshop store or, um, or gaming store, and you might be able to get these brushes. If you can't, then I would suggest you go to an art store like Michael's or, or one of the other art stores. A great place to go for brushes is Micromark. Um, you can look them up on the Internet. Uh, Micromark sell brushes very similar to these ones down here and these ones up here. And let me go into the, the brushes that I think every painter needs for doing that fine detail work. This brush right here um, is a 10-0 brush, and it has a really, really fine point on it. Look at that brush. That is amazing. That is what we call a 10-0 brush. Then we have a number two. This is a brand new brush. Then we have a one. And again, these are all round tip brushes. Then we have a zero. And these numbers refer to the thickness of the bristles on the brush and how fine they come. And this is a five zero. Normally I would, I would replace my three zeros with another three zero. But this particular one, I couldn't find three zero, so I just bought the five zero. Now, the reason I buy such a fine brush is when I'm doing eyes on a model kit. And when I do the eyes on a model kit, I like to have a really nice fine brush so I can get in. If I'm doing a female figure, I can get in and do the uh, eyes up uh, really nicely. Like uh, on this figure here, in this case, I would use this 5-0 to get right into those eyes so that I could line the eyelids so it looked like she had a bit of a makeup look and that kind of thing. Um, so that's, uh, that's one reason you buy fine detail brushes. If you're doing cars, great for doing um, the fine detail on the dashboards, things like that. 5-0 or 3-0, uh, either one of those. There's not much difference between the two uh, in terms of size, but it does have a really, really fine point on it. So um, you definitely want to have a look at that. So those are 
are the five essential brushes that I think every painter should start out with. Uh, number two, number one, zero, and a triple zero or a five zero. Those five brushes right there would be your, your best bet to start off with. Now, um, if you want to get into heavier brushes because you want to do other things, then you can you can certainly start buying. That's another number one. I'll just put that off to the side. You buy flat brushes. And in this case, I have a number four, a number eight, and a number two. And the difference between these flat brushes, as you can see there, you can see that there's a definite difference in the tips of these brushes. Okay. Now, I would use these for laying down long, flat lines. I might also use these to do a little bit of uh, dry brushing with them. Uh, they're great brushes for that uh, if you want to just skim the surface of a, uh, of a model uh, and just get that raised detail. This definitely is a brush that, that you, could, you could certainly use. So I use a number eight, a number four, and a number two. I also have a nice flat, square flat tip brush. Now this is not the best brush. Uh, they're not cheap, mind you. This is a Model Masters. These brushes here come in a variety. They, they come in what's called a tank brush, which is a large round tip brush. The tank brush is a good brush to use for that general coverage. I like having one in, in my arsenal just if I need to do something really fast and uh, I'm trying to, I want to brush paint it because for whatever reason I can't get, uh, I can't use an airbrush on it. Um, I like to have this, this large tank brush. Uh, this was sold with the idea that with the Games Workshop line of, of tanks and, and vehicles that this would be the brush that you would do all your base coating in. Um, I still prefer to spray all my base coating. So uh, I use this brush still for certain things. Um, here we have a variety of brushes. We have what's called a fine detail brush or a detail brush. We have a fine detail brush and we have a base coat brush. Those are the three essentials. Uh, we have, again, fine quality or a fine detail brush. These are all sable hair brushes. Um, we have another base coat brush and a large brush. Now, you're probably wondering why I have doubles of these in the Games Workshop Citadel brand is because the red-handled brushes were the ones that came out prior to the blue-handled. Blue-handled were supposed to be a better quality brush. Um, really, there's no difference in the brushes in, uh, from what I've seen. Um, you can only buy, I think, the blue-handled ones now. So it's... Uh, these brushes still serve me for doing fine detail on eyes. Moving those ones out of the way, let's get into these ones. These are dry brushes. These, uh, I have a large and a small dry brush. Um, you can see the difference in these ones. This one is not quite as sharp as this one. That's because I use this one a lot more than I use this one here. But dry brushes are great if you're using pastels. Um, and you're trying to, to weather with pastels or dry brush with pastels. They're also great for dry brushing uh, paints. And we're, again, we're going to be showing you how to dry brush. We're going to be showing you all that kind of stuff. Um, these are a little bit more stiff in terms of the bristles. Uh, so they're, uh, they're definitely a good set of brushes to have. I have a one-inch, what they call a chip brush. Why do I have this in my arsenal of brushes? Well, I use this if I'm going to be basing terrain uh, or if I'm doing a diorama I like to use a brush like this. So let's review. You need a good set of dry brushes um, over your over time as you build up your painting kit. Uh, a small dry brush and a large dry brush. Um, two essential dry brushes to have. We want to make sure that we have a good selection of flat brushes. And again in my case it's the eight, the four, and the two and then I have a nice flat brush as well. Okay, so those are the brushes that you want to use. Uh, have those in your arsenal as well. Then a good set of detail brushes, round sable hair brushes if you can get them. A number two, a number one, a zero, and a triple zero. And sometimes you may be want a ten zero as well. So those are brushes that... Uh, uh, I recommend, again, we'll put those in order. There's a 2, a 1, a 0, 
In my case, it's a 5-0 because I couldn't get a 3-0 and a 10-0. And those are a good selection of fine detail brushes for doing that fine detail work. Uh, if you're looking for brushes just to get you started, well, the Citadel line of brushes are usually pretty good. And they have the nice big tank brush as well. So there you go in terms of brushes. Those are the brushes I recommend that you should build your paint set on or build your painting tools on. Uh, this little guy right here, this is a Tamiya paint stirrer. You get two to a pack. They're made from metal. They're great for stirring paint uh, in your cups uh, and that sort of thing. So, again, it's a really good product. I recommend it to just about anybody um, who is looking to get into the hobby. Um, they're about 6 bucks. Now let's talk quickly about airbrushes. Here is an, here's a brush here. This is called a detail or finishing brush. Um, this is typically used in the automotive industry. I've seen a lot of videos as of late where people are starting to use these. The problem with this brush is, is if you don't know how to use one of these brushes, they can become problematic for you. Don't go out and buy one because they're inexpensive and you can't afford a good airbrush. Um, if you can't afford a good airbrush, save up your money. Buy a decent airbrush. These things run anywhere from about $25 up to about $250, depending on the manufacturer. Most of them have three different adjustments on them. We have an adjustment here for air. We have an adjustment here for our needle. And then we have another an ad air adjustment down here. If you don't know how to adjust these, you can have problems. First of all, the needle on this is fairly large. So it's going to push a lot of paint through um, the the brush, and it's going to waste a lot of paint. If you're doing a 125th scale car, for instance, or a 132nd scale model, um, this is going to waste a lot of paint because of overspray. It does a fan effect with the air or with the paint. So a lot of that paint, depending on how far back you are, is going to miss your model completely. Can you coat a, uh, a model in this in a couple of passes? Sure you can, but why would you want to? You run into the problem then of having runs and that kind of stuff. So if you're going to consider one of these, make sure you know what you're doing. If you work in the automotive industry, automotive auto body industry, this is probably a brush you already know how to use. But if you don't, I say avoid it. Don't bother going and spending the money on one of these because you're just going to have problems in the long run. So let's get rid of that. But the two that I do recommend... For people that are starting out, first and foremost is the Pash. This is their H brand. This is a brush. Let me just uh, switch cameras again. This H brand brush is a what's known as a single action external mix airbrush. What that means is that the air comes in through the line on the bottom, comes up through the body, and pushes the air out. It also draws the paint from the cup or bottle. This can also be used with a bottle. And with that action, which actually is sucking the air out, or sucking the paint out, pardon me, mixes the air and the paint and atomizes it out here at the end of the brush. These brushes are not good for fine detail work, um, but they are good for, for base coating. They're good for clears. They're good for... Um, primers and that kind of stuff and I use this airbrush just about on every model I do um, because I like it for that it's it's simplicity it's, this is basically a glorified spray bomb or a spray can um, with a little bit more uh, oomph to it now you can adjust your spray by turning the the collar here on the on the needle this is your needle down here so as you spray as you adjust it, it's going to adjust the amount of paint that is drawn out of the cup and onto your your uh, project. Great starter airbrush. Uh, guys like Don Yost, who is the king of uh, car finishes on models, he uses a single action airbrush all the time. In this particular one, I have a .5 needle. They also come with a number, or pardon me, this is a number five needle. They come with a number three and a number two. You can buy a kit uh, which has everything you need, including hose, 
uh, for right around $60. Um, so they're not that expensive, very inexpensive uh, brush to, to buy and a great starter brush for anybody interested in uh, getting into the hobby of, of model building or uh, anything else. So I highly recommend this brush if you're just starting out. I've had this brush for years years and years and years, and I still continually use it. Um, I just clean it, make sure it's all good and ready to go, and it's uh, it's a great brush for that. And finally, uh, a double-action airbrush. This is what they've what's known as an internal mix airbrush. The paint and the air are mixed inside the body of the tube, which happens down at this end. Um, the air comes in through the bottom. You push down for air, and you guys have seen. This is my Neo. You've seen me do a review on this. And you pull back for paint. So as you push down, you get air. As you pull back, you start to get paint. This is a gravity-fed airbrush. Gravity, you would think, is is uh, going to actually just pull the paint all the time. It's always going to be flowing. But in reality, what it's doing is it's sucking the, the paint from this canister, which is on top, or this color cup, which is on top of the airbrush. The air comes in, creates a vacuum inside here, and that's why there's a little air hole on the top creates a bit of a vacuum to pull that paint out through the tip of the airbrush, and it works out really well. So there is our look at airbrushes. Uh, more advanced users are going to go with a double action. Um, for most model building, I I would say buy yourself a double action if you can afford it. This one was right around $60 Canadian, um, so it's, uh, it's going to be fairly less money uh, in the U.S., and I'm sure you can find this online for um, even less. All right, so there's our look at the tools that you need. Next week, we're going to talk about color mixing, and uh, we'll go from there. Till next week. Well, here we are back at the bench to have a look, as I promised, at the Iwata Deluxe Airbrush Set. Everything you need to start airbrushing comes in this one box. It comes with a compressor, an airbrush, paint, airbrush cleaner, all the hoses that you need, along with some additional fittings uh, that you'll need as well if you have a different style of airbrush. It comes also with their inline filter moisture trap, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Comes with a wonderfully bound book, which you see there in the back. A uh, freehand stencil and a couple of wonderful DVDs. Now, let's talk a little bit about some of the things in here uh, individually. First and foremost, we have the Airbrush from Scratch DVD, which is a great little instructional DVD to get you started on airbrushing. It uh, tells you all the little things that you need to know, takes you through some exercises as well, and uh, really a great little product um, to you or to review. It's not very long. I think it's only about uh, an hour long, and there's some great little tips and tricks in there if you are going to be doing other things with your airbrush, such as fine art. All right, next we have the Freehand Airbrush Templates DVD by Eddie Young. Now, Eddie Young uh, is an airbrush artist that's been around for a long time. He's done some fantastic work, uh, magazine work, uh, large artwork as well. Uh, a great artist in his own right. And he takes you through how to use his freehand um, stencil setup. And with this kit, you also get one of Eddie's freehand stencils. So he shows you how to use this stencil and uh, a great little two-part piece. And if you're, again, if you're interested in doing fine art, this is the way to go. Now, the stencil, as you can see, I haven't even taken it out of the package because uh, I haven't used the stencil. I don't have any use for it at the moment, but at some point in time, I may, uh, I may actually use it. And I'll go back to reviewing uh, Eddie's DVD and find out a little bit more about how to use it. The DVD is very, very well put together, and it's, uh, it's very instructional. So definitely check that out when you, if you uh, should so choose to get this set. Now we start getting into um, some of the little extras, including the automotive, custom automotive and motorcycle airbrushing uh, book by Pamela Chanteau, I believe is that's, that's how it's pronounced. This book is beautifully done. I'll just move the stand out of the way here. And the book itself is beautifully done with a lot of color illustrations inside. I'm not going to show you the whole book, but you can see that 
takes you through step by step. It is a hardcover book. In this case, they're doing a dragon. I want to get to a little bit more at the beginning here, actually. You can tell I was reading the section on the dragon because that's what it opens up to. Uh, what do we got here? We got some basic techniques in the book as well. And some wonderful, wonderful artwork. You can see that that tank there is absolutely gorgeous. So a beautifully hardbound book comes with this set. This book you can buy at retails um, for right around, I believe, thirty or forty dollars. Let me just check the back. It's forty. It's forty dollars, thirty nine ninety five. Um, if you were to buy this at a uh, bookstore, uh, but you get it as part of the Iwata Deluxe Airbrush Set. So um, it is a wonderful book to read. It's got full of illustrations and how-tos, so definitely check that out if you're into car building or car painting, pardon me. Now, let's get to the heart of the system, the air, the Iwata Airbrush Cleaner. Wonderful little cleaner. You can see I've started to use the airbrush cleaner that's in here. Um, I go through a lot of airbrush cleaner because I use my airbrush a ton. And uh, this is odorless. It's environmentally safe. So, again, like I was saying earlier in the show, you don't need a paint booth to use this. So, great little product. Works very well with the Calmart paints uh, that you get from Iwata. And I haven't used the Calm Arts yet. These are a fine art paint. Um, you can use them on your models. comes with all the basic colors. This kit comes with 10 bottles, 5 opaque, and 5 transparents. Um, so definitely it's something uh, to try out. I'll give you a more in-depth review on Calm Art paint uh, at a, on another show as, uh, I tend to, as I use them. Uh, comes with adapters. As I was saying earlier, this comes with adapters for all the major airbrush brands, including Posh, Badger, and Aztec. So you can use all of these. Uh, you can use this airbrush set with any of the airbrushes you may already have in your collection. Comes with the Iwata Eclipse. Uh, now, the Eclipse airbrush is a step up from the Neo that I'm using. Uh, it is a double-action airbrush. comes with everything inside. We're going to give you an in-depth review and show you how to break this one down, clean it, and put it back together uh, in another show coming up when we start airbrushing. We're going to show you all about that. But the Iwata Neo... The Awada Eclipse, uh, it comes standard with this kit. Now, this kit retails right around the $650 mark, but if you look online, you can find it for as low as $390, I believe. I believe right now Chicago Airbrush Company uh, has it on for $390, so it's a great value. This airbrush alone sells for uh, well over $100, so it's... Uh, Definitely a lot of value packed in here. You get an airbrush hose as well. You get all the hoses that you need. Uh, and you also get this wonderful little compressor. This is their Smart Jet compressor. Um, this is the Studio Series. Now, this is what, it, what they mean by Smart Jet is this will come on as you need air. I'm going to give you a full length review on this again in an upcoming episode. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But it comes with everything that you need. You don't have to go out and buy any extra hoses, any fittings, anything like that. Everything that you need for this compressor comes in this box. So you don't need to go out and uh, get anything extra. It also comes with its own moisture trap, which is very important when you're buying a compressor is to make sure that you have a moisture trap so that you don't get air into your line and ruin your paint job. Now, the other thing that it comes with as a little... I guess kind of added bonus is this Iwata pistol grip filter. Now this filter threads right onto the bottom of your airbrush and then your hose connects to the bottom of the filter. Now this is an extra insurance to um, ensure that you're not going to get any moisture that may get past this into your line and then finally into your airbrush. Now this goes onto the airbrush very, very simply. I'm going to open this up real quick and pull it out of the package. And let's grab my Iwata Neo. This will fit on any Iwata airbrush the way that it is. You simply just take it and you screw it onto the bottom. Tighten it up, make sure that it's tight. And now 
It not only gives you a little bit of a grip, so it gives you more of that what you're looking for, but it also makes it sit a lot more comfortably in your hand. And we're going to get into airbrushing techniques a little bit later on, as I said, as we review the Iwata Eclipse. So there you have it. That's everything that's in the Iwata Deluxe Airbrush Set. You can find it today uh, at Chicago Airbrush for around $390. Uh, check online. Um, check your local retailers. See who has it. Um, and go from there. So everything that you get in the kit, two DVDs, some paint, some airbrush cleaner, the Iwata Eclipse Airbrush, the Smart Jet Studio Series compressor, all the hoses, stencils, book, and uh, a whole lot of, of great stuff. So go and check out the Iwata Deluxe Airbrush Set if you're looking to start airbrushing your models today. Hey, thanks for sticking around with us today and letting us show you some of the tools that we use when it comes to painting your models. And wasn't that a great little look at the Iwata Deluxe Airbrush Set? I mean, that thing is phenomenal. It's a great price for a great kit. If you were to buy all those components separately, man, you would spend a lot of money. So save yourself some bucks. If you're looking at getting a new compressor and a new airbrush, that's the way to go. Set you up just right first time out of the box all right so as uh, we close out the show i just want to thank a couple of people uh, and tell you about some things that are maybe not model related but are related to me personally and first and foremost i want you to go and check out and subscribe to a brand new channel on youtube it's called the indomitable Dr. Von Crypt. And this is a show that is going to be going into some of those old B style movies and uh, with a great cast of characters. Go check that out. Uh, it's uh, paying homage to all the old horror hostesses and hosts of Days Gone By and maybe some of the guys we still see on television today. So go check that out. It's on YouTube, The Indomitable. Dr. Von Kript. I hope I got that right. Now, I also want you to check out a Scale War Machines on YouTube. Check out their forum. Become a member. Uh, if you're interested in historical footage, if you're interested in armor building, that is definitely a place to go. They've got a lot of great tips and tricks and techniques. They even show you how to make your own little stowage bags uh, for your tank. So go check those guys out as well. Uh, as always, I want to thank a bunch of people. Rebel Bubba, uh, Jamie Waring, uh, who else do I want to thank uh, real quick? Uh, Nick Ambergy, Nick Vildis, Jonathan Milbury, uh, a bunch of people that are part of our community um, that, uh, you know, have, have gone out of their way to help to promote amazing plastic on their own time. And they're starting to show our logo in their, their videos as well. And I think that's absolutely awesome. Again, I want you to always go and check out the fine folks over at Video Workbench. Jason Garris puts together tips and tricks every Wednesday. Check those out. They're well worth looking at it. Where can you find us? Well, you can find us on the web all over the place. If you've got any questions, uh, you got a tip or a trick you want to share with us you can drop us a line at info at amazingplastic.com that is uh, our email or you can go come and check us out and become a member it's absolutely free to become a member you can become a member of our g plus community over on google plus you can like us on facebook and you can subscribe subscribe to us over at youtube and we hope that you will we're growing fast uh we're trying to get as much content up there as we can and we are uh trying to bring you the best of information that we possibly can that we research each and every week and put together this show for you now, if you want to show your support for Amazing Plastic, there's a couple ways that you can do that. One is you can get yourself, you know, some nice swag. Uh, T-shirts like the one I'm wearing here. Uh, we have aprons, clocks, uh, coffee cups, all kinds of stuff. Over at our Cafe Press store. It's cafepress.com slash amazingplastic. And you can find all kinds of great items there to show your love and uh, show your support for the show. Or you can drop us a tip into our uh, little donation portion over on our webpage at amazingplastic.com. So by all means, check us out. Uh, you, again, you can find us on YouTube. 
You can find us on Google Plus and you can find us on Facebook. So um, show your love, become a member. It doesn't cost you anything. We're never going to charge for our content that we put up each and every week. Uh, we have got some things in the works uh, for you a little bit later on in the year. Uh, maybe we'll unroll that uh, by season two. Season one's coming along great. I can't thank you guys enough. We continue to grow in our community. We continue to grow here on YouTube. And the visits to our webpage are unbelievable. We have some great articles up there on the scale of light by Kimberly Andrews. And we're going to get more content on the website as we progress forward. I want to thank the fine folks over at PM Hobbycraft. Uh, they are now supporting us uh, with their products and um, that kind of stuff. So if you are looking to buy some models, buy some tools, check out pmhobbycraft.ca. And uh, we're working on a discount code, so that'll be mentioned uh, in an upcoming show. So show your love over there. Go check out what they have. They've got a pretty good website, and uh, it's easy to order. Uh, now, again, uh, Iwata, we want to thank them for the wonderful kit that they sent over, the deluxe airbrush set uh, that we are going to make very good use of here in the studio, show you how to use the products that are in there, and uh, we're going to uh, go forward with that. Uh, we, As always, we want to thank the fine folks over at Acre Acrolos. Vallejo. Let's hope, uh, hopefully I am uh, pronouncing that right. We use exclusively Vallejo paints or Vallejo paints here in the studio. And uh, they were kind enough and they sent us over a whole bunch of paint to use uh, here in the studio for our model building needs. Uh, what else do we want? To, we want to thank the fine folks over at Bob Smith Industries. They sent us over some glue recently, some super glues. And we're going to be showing you what those super glues are. And you probably are using their product without even knowing it. That's coming up in an upcoming show as well what else do we got coming real quick uh this friday we have uh jack holzer the host of our amazing plastic across the pond hangouts on saturday morning and the uh amazing plastic hangout on sunday night he's going to be talking about on friday uh, fiber optics so we're going to be taking a look at a little bit of lighting we're also going to give you a review of a new lighting board from our good friends over at Tenna controls they sent us over a lighting board that can go into a 125th scale car or larger and it has driving lights and all kinds of stuff and we're going to talk about that and give you a breadboard review of that coming up on friday um on monday we get into part two where we start to explain paint and how to mix colors how to mix your own custom colors uh when it comes to painting and then on the following on the following friday we've got jay baron uh, from evil duck creations who is back with another look at uh, molding this time we're going to be talking about two-part molds and finally on the part three of our painting we're actually going to do some painting and we're going to show you how to lay down some of the colors from the theory that we talked about uh when it came to color mixing and the brushes and the equipment that we talked about today so stay tuned keep coming back if you've got any questions uh comments you can leave them down below or you can uh again get a hold of us at info at amazingplastic.com we check that in, that email all the time so we know exactly uh, what you're asking and what you're looking for. Uh, become a member of our community and all that other great stuff. Until next time, we'll see you back here at the workbench. <laughs>